I was talking about uh, suicide ideation, and he asked, "Kenapa tak buat je?" Hi, my name is Nisha Angun. I've been going for therapy since 2019. I go by Naim Lee. I'm 28 years old. I've been to counseling once. My name is Harmeet Kaur. I'm 24 years old and I've been for counseling actually for about 12 years now. I'm Cynthia Shoba. I'm a lecturer. I'm currently uh, lecturing at the University of Cyberjaya. Before the pandemic, people find talking about mental health issues or having a depression is some, something like a taboo or a stigma. Passed down from our boomer parents. When we say mental health issues, people think like, you're crazy or something. People think it's just like, it's fake. Like my parents once told me like, oh, I think you and your brother just like fake your depression just to get out of doing chores. And that scarred me for real. That was a long time ago, but yeah, they don't believe in mental health. When we have a fever or a cough or a cold, we do not hesitate to go to a doctor. Same goes for our mental health. It needs to be taken care of. Sometimes we have days where we feel ups and downs, right? And then it's fine. We bounce back. But when it starts going on and on and on, and it's disturbing us, interfering with your daily life. There are hard days and you know good days. Some days it's just so hard to you know wake up, uh, so I just sleep all day. Pre lockdown, my parents did not understand a single bit about mental health. But then when they saw me being in such a horrible state, this girl hasn't gone out of bed in like a week. She hasn't eaten a single thing, so I think it's serious now. I convinced my parents that I needed therapy and they saw me getting better. So I think that's when they realized like, okay, this is a real thing and therapy is actually really important. I didn't know at that time this was it, like I had a mental health issue because the diagnosis came after a lot of physical tests because they thought I had a problem with my tummy, they thought I was having some issue with my breathing, so they all did like a bunch of CT scans, x-rays and everything and then only realized that it could be a mental health issue. It's good for them to see a therapist to work things out so we don't have that thing at the back of our mind where it's just there disturbing us on and off. In this fast-paced, busy, high-expectation lifestyle, there will come a time where we'll be so overwhelmed. We just want someone to talk to. And certain issues, we can't speak with our friends, with our families. So we rather speak it to a professional who does not judge us, who is neutral, who creates a safe space for us where we can let down our guard. I would say that um, choosing my counsellor is very important. I think this happens to every teenager where they go to a counselling session in school and that teacher shares with all the other teachers what your problems are. Yeah, I've had that happen to me. I've had a teacher, another teacher come up to me and tell me about what I specifically told a counselling teacher. I was frozen in that moment, but I think that happens quite often because the teachers like to gossip. I've also had counsellors who judge me or like belittle or invalidate my feelings. I was talking about uh, suicide ideation and he asked, kenapa tak buat je? I was uncomfortable when I, was, when I first saw him and then when I start talking about you know my problems i felt more and more uncomfortable in sharing he was wearing a mask i can sense that he was snickering under the mask after that session i had an outburst i came for help not for me to being judged i don't know how the procedure their procedure but i think that was very uncalled for i was telling my counselor how i felt depressed and she's like you have to read more quran you have to pray more and i'm like don't you think I get that enough from my parents already? <laughs> so it's like, it's not the vibe. I'm paying you and you're telling me this? That's not cute. I don't need to hear this. So I did. <laughs> this is honestly why I choose a non-Muslim counsellor or therapist. Not to say that I don't believe in religious ways of treating mental health. It's just, I already know the religious way. I want to know a different way to cope with my emotions. Essentially, therapy is talking. It helps me realize and understand in that moment when I can't really help myself that there is somebody else helping me even though yes I am paying for it. They are helping me realize what is actually wrong and how I can overcome it. I always tell this to my friends, kita ni nak cari kasut pun kita pilih. Takkan dengan orang yang kita nak minta tolong kita tak pilih. You need to properly select your counselors. It will be hard. It will take a lot of time, effort and 
energy, but I promise you it's gonna be worth it. Go in with an open mind. Do not put any expectations. Talk to your counsellor, set goals with your counsellor. What do you want to work on? The solution does not come from the counsellor, it comes from you. Not the counsellor doing 90% uh, of the work and the client 10%. Basically, the counsellor guides you in what is best for you. Because what works for you may not work for me and what works for me may not work for you because we are all unique in our own way. And lastly, Happy World Mental Health Day. So do take care of your mental health because it's very important to all of us. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Meshable Southeast Asia and stay tuned for more videos.